Hi, my name is Marcus Butler. I am a medical oncologist at Princess Margaret Cancer Center, and I treat patients with uh, melanoma, with immunotherapy, and other treatments. Uh, today, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, briefly the concept of tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, a type of therapy that has shown promising results in patients with uh, uveal melanoma. The uh, tumor microenvironment of uh, patients with uh, cancer is a very complex uh, microenvironment. It includes many types of cells, not just the tumor itself, but many uh, cells that are either fighting the cancer, or also other cells that may be helping the cancer uh, uh, survive and exist. This includes blood vessels uh, that help to feed uh, nutrients to the tumor. It also includes lymphocytes, uh, many of which may be trying to fight against a foreign invader. It turns out that in uh, patients with various types of cancers, this uh, infiltrating lymphocytes that are trying to fight the cancer can often uh, successfully uh, uh, eliminate cancers uh, in, in patients. Also, with new immunotherapies, the immune checkpoint blocking agents, you can see elimination of tumors, which is shown here in this uh, tumor at the top, where there is uh, infiltrating lymphocytes and then giving anti-PD-1 or anti-PD-L1 drugs can result in uh, significant responses against the cancer. For tumors like uveal melanoma, uh, there are uh, infiltrating lymphocytes and other cells, but the immune response uh, after uh, treatment with anti-PD-1 and uh, drugs is not as robust, so that the response rate is quite low in the 5% range. So therefore, some patients require additional treatments uh, with uh, drugs to try to help uh, build upon the responses of anti-PD-1 drugs. Uh, many of you are aware of combination immunotherapy where anti-CTLA-4 drugs like ipilimumab are combined with anti-PD-1 drugs like nivolumab, which results in a, a substantial response uh, in some patients. But unfortunately, in uveal melanoma, the response rate is measured in the uh, 10 to 15% range. Additional experimental combinations are ongoing, and those studies are, are uh, being uh, assessed for uh, promising results in, in patients. And additionally, the other strategies look at ways to induce an anti-cancer response or to expand a, a meager uh, anti-tumor response. This involves vaccinations or engineered cell therapies where patients receive treatments or expanding tumor, infiltrate, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes as a therapy. So cell therapies can be divided up into three different types. And I think that's important uh, in a TIL talk to just uh, mention these briefly. One is the tumor infiltrating lymphocyte uh, strategy, which I'll go over in more detail in a minute. But essentially, the starting material is the tumor. These, uh, this tumor mass, usually you need about at least a centimeter uh, cubic uh, amount of tumor for, for expansion, is grown in the laboratory where the T cells uh, destroy and overpopulate the tumor cells in the mass. And then you have a pure population of lymphocytes that are used for an infusion in patients. Other strategies take T cells from the blood, which are then selectively expanded using various methods for infusion as a treatment, or engineered products such as a TCR or CAR T cells, where a genetic engineering program is, is uh, conducted in order to modify the lymphocyte who then is infused into patients as a treatment. So we're going to review tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Again, the way uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocyte products are generally generated is as follows. First, a tumor sample is resected from the patient. Those uh, tumor samples are then uh, either uh, digested into a single cell suspension or into little uh, fragments that are then plated into wells in the laboratory. 
These are then grown in the laboratory with a cytokine called IL-2, where the T cells that are present in the tumor overpopulate and destroy the tumor in the cultures. A second step, which includes a 14-day rapid expansion protocol, is conducted where large numbers of T cells are generated for infusion. In order for the patient to accept the T cells and for the T cells or the TIL to really have a robust response and persist, patients must first have their uh, uh, lymphodepleting chemotherapy uh, performed. This includes drugs like cyclophosphamide and fludarabine, where space is made for the T cells to uh, then be infused and then expand and, and attack the tumor. The T cells, as I mentioned, are large numbers that are uh, 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 infused. And then IL-2 injections or infusions are given uh, to help the T cells uh, um, uh, expand in the patient. So this whole process is a lengthy one. The uh, pre-rep uh, assessment or generating the, the TIL product takes between two and four weeks. There are some quality control measures that are then taken. And then the REP itself, the rapid expansion protocol, takes another four weeks. Patients usually receive the chemotherapy about a week before the T-cell infusion. T-cells are then given. And then the IL-2 injections are given over uh, a week or so uh, following the uh, T-cell infusion. A major uh, uh, study that was published in 2017 was conducted at the National Cancer Institute. Uh, this study showed that for patients with uveal melanoma, we see about a 35% response rate. And this included patients who had checkpoint refractory uh, 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 uveal melanoma. So these were patients who had previously not received any immunotherapy uh, with checkpoint inhibitors, but went on to the, uh, uh, that's the blue ones where they then received TIL, and the, the red ones are the patients who had previously received immune checkpoint inhib uh, inhibitors. For many of these patients, the responses were durable. As you can see here, this red line where the tumor has shrunk and then continues to shrink for greater than uh, 21 weeks. Several other patients experienced um, uh, responses that were ongoing at the time of uh, this publication. There were other patients that had brief responses and then further growth, as well as patients with stable disease. So what this meant is that there was a high response rate, 35%, in a group of patients which are very challenging uh, to treat uh, uh, with uh, tr uh, therapies. Three of the seven patients who had previously had immunotherapy and progressed on it had responses, or three of the seven responses were patients who had had prior checkpoint blockade. Six of the 27 patients, however, that were taking part in the study were not able to be uh, treated due to insufficient TIL uh, generation. One of the interesting things of the uh, uh, study that was published in 2017 was that the patients who had the most reactive tumor infiltrating lymphocytes demonstrated in laboratory tests showed uh, better responses compared to the other patients. Our own experience with melanoma TILs has, is a similar, has similar results. We conducted a study uh, in the last uh, uh, number of years, starting in 2013, where uh, patients, including one patient with uveal melanoma, uh, were treated with tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Uh, these were patients who were heavily pretreated. Almost everyone had prior immunotherapy. In that particular study, now this is for all melanoma patients, our uveal patient had stable disease, but we did see responses in cutaneous melanoma in a, a percentage of patients that would be similar to what was seen with the, um, with the uh, uh, study that was done at the N, uh, NIH. In our particular study, we saw uh, examples of patients who had shrinkage of tumor. As you can see here, there's this big mass here 
that grew prior to uh, till infusion and then substantially shrunk after uh, uh, T-cell infusion. This is a cutaneous melanoma patient previously treated with an immune checkpoint inhibitor. What we did see, unfortunately, one month later is a new uh, a tumor deposit developed in this patient. And that particular patient uh, had a resection of the tumor and we found high PD-1 expression on the tumor. This has resulted in uh, an ongoing study that recently is completed uh, where patients received uh, TIL infusion, where patients, all of which had previously had immune checkpoint inhibitors, these patients uh, uh, receive IL-2, and then we initiate anti-PD-1 therapy with a drug called pembrolizumab in order to see whether we can fight against one of the mechanisms of resistance for, for de of developing resistance against uh, uh, TIL therapy. In this particular study, we've had three patients with uveal melanoma. Unfortunately, we did not see a response in these patients, although they had been heavily pretreated uh, before and had uh, all three of these patients had been treated with immunotherapy. But what was what what was interesting is that we saw several patients with stable disease that lasted several months. There are other uh, interesting trials that are uh, open uh, in North America. The current uveal melanoma tumor infiltrating lymphocyte protocol is available in Pittsburgh at the Hillman Cancer Center. Uh, and this is the only uh, phase two study, which is uh, currently focusing on TIL uh, for patients. There's also a very interesting study at MD Anderson where autologous T cells are directed against a novel antigen called SLC45A2, uh, uh, where these T cells are infused to try to fight against uveal melanoma. And then also at Houston Methodist Hospital associated with Baylor, there is a GD2 CAR T cell protocol, uh, which is targeting patients with GD2 uh, positive cancers, and that includes uveal melanoma uh, for, for patients. So there is ongoing exciting uh, uh, studies uh, that are being conducted with cell therapies. In addition, our center is uh, participating on studies that target cancer testis antigens like NYSA1 and uh, MAJ4. Unfortunately, these are, uh, have a low expression uh, for uveal melanoma. This, uh, I'd like to thank uh, our team at uh, Princess Margaret uh, that include Dr. Spripico, Hogue, uh, and, and Dr. Sable. Uh, who participated in the uh, uh, uveal melanoma TIL protocols. We currently don't have a TIL protocol open at this time, although a, a follow-up study focusing on uveal melanoma is in the works. Thank you very much. I appreciate your listening.